So this smartwatch has one really interesting trick up its sleeve that I haven't seen in any other, and that honestly, I don't think we're ever gonna see again. So at this point, we know what a smartwatch is already, right? This is a stable, mature category. They deliver mostly across the board on all the same functions. And aside from the one crazy trick, this one is no exception. This is the OnePlus Watch 2, three years after the original OnePlus Watch, and it costs 300 bucks. So for the $300 you're spending, you're getting a pretty nice circular watch design. It comes in this black or silver, stainless steel body, and a sapphire cover glass over a 1.4 inch, 60 hertz AMOLED display. Design-wise, you could argue it takes cues from maybe the OnePlus 11 or the OnePlus 12 with the way the camera bump is melted into the side rail of the phone. They've done a similar thing here with the buttons on the side of the watch. So there's a circular button at the top and this rectangular button at the bottom. And I kind of like it. It's a nice shape. It's got this little subtle, classy variation of just the pure circle. And then the back looks pretty standard too. You got the four pins at the top. Those are for charging. And it has all the sensors you'd expect for a smartwatch in the middle, optical heart rate sensor, pulse oximeter for blood oxygen. And of course, it still has the interchangeable bands, same as Gen 1. And the whole thing is actually both IP68 dust and water resistant and reaches a US military standard for durability. Basically means it can also withstand extreme temperature and moisture and shock, among other things. It's not too heavy. It's built pretty well. This display goes up to 1,000 nits peak brightness. So it looks good. It's built well across the board. Nice. So what's the catch? What's the weird twist? Well, at the beginning, I mentioned like we already kind of know what a smartwatch is, which is a tiny computer on your wrist with a tiny screen and a tiny battery. And that's fine. Like they all tend to have pretty short battery lives just because they're so small. And so you kind of just charge them every day. And that's the way it is. Like the main competitors here are the Apple Watch, which is 18 hours. Although that's not the most direct competitor because that's the iPhone, but the Galaxy Watch, one of the best, 40 hours of battery, and the Pixel Watch, the newest one, 24 hours of battery life. But this one, OnePlus, is claiming 100 hours. 100 hour battery life in smart mode, which is not the battery saving mode, it's actually the default mode out the box, 100 hours. So 96 hours is four days. I feel like, you know, 100 sounds cooler, so they just went with 100, but four days of battery sounds a lot less inconvenient, so you know, I had to put that to the test. So for the past four straight days, I've been that guy walking around with both an Apple Watch Ultra, which claims 36 hours of normal use, and this thing, doing all the same stuff with both watches on, getting notifications, doing workouts, just poking around the UI. And by the end, I was actually very impressed with both. So the $800 Apple Watch Ultra actually overperformed the 36 claimed hours for me. By hour 56, it was about ready to die. Now, meanwhile, the OnePlus watch had about 15% left. Now you're probably thinking, wait, that's not even close to 100 hours. That's like 50 something. But OnePlus told me that if you turn the always on display off, that's good for two more days of battery life. It's actually off by default. I turned it on for this test, but that would get you well over the 100 hour mark. To be fair, that's also probably true about the Apple Watch Ultra. Now, one detail to consider that I think actually mattered for this particular test, I've been wearing hoodies a lot because it's that type of weather. And so even with the sleeves on this Chevron hoodie, which I'll link it below because you probably want to check it out, uh, it covers the watch. And so when you cover the watch with your sleeve, it thinks it's in the dark because the light sensors are covered. So it turns the brightness way down on the watch. And so I think that's why it outperformed the battery numbers that it's claiming is because I had a sleeve over it a lot of the times and the brightness was low. But even still, this $300 watch outperformed this $800 smartwatch just in terms of battery. But now here's the thing, the way that they're achieving this battery life is I think more interesting than the battery life itself. This is the twist. See, most smartwatches have a chip inside computing everything with some high powered cores and some high efficiency cores to balance out power and battery life. This watch has two entirely separate processors and two different operating systems running for each of them. So there's a high powered Snapdragon W5 inside that's powering Wear OS 4 and that only lights up for things connected to that. Then there's also a BES 2700 chip that is always on and runs RTOS and they both share the same 32 gigs of base storage and two gigs of RAM. So Wear OS kicks on 
for the more intensive tasks like maps or music playback, but the RTOS that's always on is for those basic low power tasks, heart rate monitoring, phone calls, notifications, background stuff. It's like a hybrid car. It's really interesting. Like, and a fully electric car, you guys already know, has all the benefits of being really responsive, but not the best range. But a gas car has a ton of range, just not as responsive as fully electric. So if you get a hybrid, best of the both worlds, responsive and range. And this watch, it's a hybrid with the best of both worlds, responsiveness and range. So I've been pretty impressed. You know, using this thing, it's responsive. It has a ton of watch faces. There's a lot of custom workouts, which look very familiar with tracking and everything that still sends all the data to the Health app in plenty of detail for me. I do still wish now shoveling snow was a workout type, but that's another story. But you know, these here are regular weightlifting workouts. And also, can I say, I really like that it is hold to end the workout, not tap to end. So it's way harder to accidentally stop a workout. Great idea. Also another weird quirk, this button here has a crown that rotates but that rotation doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't change the volume. It doesn't scroll up or down in anything. It does nothing. It's not connected to anything. It just freely spins. Apparently that's literally just to make it more durable upon impact. It doesn't serve any function. Also, it does have this weird hitch that it, it hasn't really gotten any less annoying, which is if I get a notification, I feel the buzz on my wrist, then I lift up my wrist and it takes like a full two seconds to show me the notification I just got. Not that two seconds is a disaster, it's not a ton of time, but it's longer than you expect, and it kind of annoys me to have to wait in comparison to other watches which will just show me the notification right away. And I feel like you can actually see the moment that it fires up the Snapdragon W5 and Wear OS kind of snaps on right in front of you before it shows you that notification. It's very odd. But here's the other twist on top of everything we've already talked about. I don't think this dual chip system is all of the magic creating this great battery life because this watch also has a 500 milliamp hour battery. Now 500 milliamp hours doesn't sound like a lot, but here's the sizes of other smartwatches in competition with this and their battery sizes and how long they last. And it's, it's a little bigger than you'd expect. Now, if I gave the Pixel Watch 2, which also has a Snapdragon W5, by the way, if I gave the Pixel Watch 2 a 500 milliamp hour battery, do we think it would last 50 hours? I don't know, but there you go. Honestly, at the end of the day, I just came away from this mostly just impressed that they actually kept the price of this watch so low because two chips and two OSs and the work that goes into that, I don't know, to me that just sounds expensive and it's really not missing anything else too drastic. I think it's competitive in a lot of good ways at 300 bucks. So I think the clear positives would be a nice design, really classy looking design, nice display, dual frequency GPS, so that's for better accuracy, and then of course, really good battery life. The four days we talked about is awesome, but if you put on power saver mode, it's up to 12 days of battery life. Now this is gonna disable a lot of the Wear OS things, so it's just basic stuff, exercises, heart rate monitoring, but you could get it to really last a week if you wanted to. But then the weaknesses are definitely the delay in checking your notifications. The haptics also aren't that nice. And there's no iPhone compatibility, but you already knew that. Uh, but I would also say the charger is uh, not that cool. Honestly, it's kind of clunky. I mean, it works perfectly fine, don't get me wrong, but it's just like a big plastic block with pins and magnets in it. But it'll get you a full day's charge in 10 minutes and a full charge in an hour, so that's acceptable. But for 300 bucks, I'd say OnePlus has redeemed itself from its previous efforts in smartwatches. It's pretty good. Like in a world of smartwatch gimmicks, there's the one with earbuds inside. There's the one for fitness. There's the one for the iPhone. Maybe this is the one with the hybrid system and pretty good battery life. Maybe that's enough for you. Let me know in the comments below. Either way, that's been it. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Peace.